Welcome in, men, to session nine of Creation, Distortion, and Redemption. And in this session, we're asking the question, is it ever just sex? So the scripture we're going to use is 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 12 through 20. So while you're getting your Bible over there, let's kind of ask a fun question and kind of get our minds uh, headed in the right direction about this. So uh, let's talk, before we talk sex, let's talk snacks, right? <laughs> so <laughs> what's the tie in there? Well, uh, just hear me out with this. But do you remember the old Lay's marketing campaign where they, they made the claim about their potato chip and they issued this challenge? Bet you can't eat just one. So, so I'll, I, I can't. I failed, right? I if if I'm going to open up a bag of potato chips, not just Lay's potato chips, I'm I'm going to eat a bunch of them. So, what would be a snack for you that's a lot like that? Whether it be gummy bears or Cheez Its or you know donuts, what is it that there's no way you can just eat one peanut M and M's? I'd put that on that list. I'd, hey, any kind of M M&M, and M, I'd put it on that list, but. You know, uh, here's the thing. Men can get carried away with snacks, and men can get carried away with sex. And we live in a sexually charged culture that encourages every form of sexual perversion without restraint. And so the, the Corinthian culture from which this text comes was much like our own, just a very sexually decadent group of peoples. Matter of fact, the word pornography comes from the word porneia that is translated sexual immorality all through the New Testament. And to the Corinthian men, sexual immorality was just run of the mill. It was everyday kind of behavior. It was normal for men to act the way that they did. And so this, this occasion for this text, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12, one of four times in the book of 1 Corinthians, this phrase is used, all things are lawful for me. And if you notice in your Bible, that's in quotes. That's not a, that's not a, a principle of Scripture. He's quoting, quoting a kind of a Corinthian wisdom saying, sort of, of one of the things that they would say. In other words, that, that phrase, all things are lawful for me, is just another way for Corinthian men to say, what's the big deal? It's just sex. So Paul disagrees. Uh, for a man who is redeemed by Jesus Christ, it's never just sex. So I'm going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses uh, 12 through 20. And in this text, we're going to talk about three reasons why it's never just sex. But let's read it first, and then we're going to talk about it. And by the way, as I read this, you may hear some thunder uh, there's a storm going through in our area, and it just may be in the audio, so <laughs> it just is what it is. But uh, we do appreciate the rain, and whenever and, and however we can get it. But uh, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12, All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and stomach for food. There's your snacks. And God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two will become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You're not your own. For you are bought with a price, so glorify God in your body." So let's go through that passage right there, and let's talk about three reasons it's never just sex. First reason it's never just sex is because sexual immorality enslaves men. We mentioned that Paul is quoting kind of a Corinthian proverb that all things are lawful for me. 
We would also see that he's quoting another one when he when he talks about food. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food. So, you know, the Corinthian way is just, hey, listen, man, the, all these things are just for the body. You feel it. Why not do it? And why not enjoy it? Just indulge it. It's kind of the, the Corinthian way. And this idea eventually became a theological challenge for the church. Some who profess Christ didn't see why they shouldn't stop doing the things that they were already doing. We see that pervasive in today's church. We know that that the the young the the average age that a young man is exposed to pornography now is age eleven. So most guys, it's it's not that they've seen pornography later in their life. I was a teenager before the first time I saw anything like that. And even then, you would have to go to a store or have a buddy that snuck it into his bedroom or something like that. Now it's, it's just on a phone. It's so accessible. And so now young men as children are, are being exposed to pornography, not just on a every once in a while basis, but just on a normal basis. And so what we see going on in, in our church is that young men are giving their life to Christ. But pornography has been so pervasive and normalized in their life, they, they don't even check up on it. They don't see why they should stop doing it. it. It's amazing to me how many young men and now even women talk about pornography openly in their marriage, that they would use it and resort to it, and they just kind of see it as normal behavior. That's kind of a Corinthian mentality that we see being lived out in, in our culture as well. And so it's the idea, man, it's just the body. It's just sex. It, the body dies. Isn't it more about the spirit, right? That's the mentality that Paul is challenging in this, this um, passage. He's challenging the idea that all things are lawful for me. And Paul comes along and he says, but I won't be dominated by anything. That Paul says, let me, let me tell you where I am. Uh, you, you may think all things are lawful for you, but all things are not helpful. You may say all things are lawful for me, but he says, I will not be dominated by anything. So no man can deny sexual urges are overwhelming. Boy, it's just something we think about, something we feel, it's something we desire. That That's normal. And listen, guys, even when you're saved, you're still going to have those urges. Like hunger and food, sexual urges eventually return even if they are satisfied. It's, it's one of those things. You can go do it, and you think, man, I'm just, I feel it so strong. Why don't I just go and, and, and do this and get rid of that urge? We, every guy knows. It's just going to come back. And, and the more you feed it in sinful ways, the worse it becomes. Indulging sexual urges without restraint on a man, can he can easily become dominated by sex. Paul said, I won't be dominated by anything. That goes for food. That goes for sex. That goes for money. That goes for my recreation. I think that ought to be the mentality of any man's life, that I'm not just going to go throughout my day thinking about just what does my body want to do next. I've been around guys who, while they're eating one meal, they're thinking about what the next one's going to be. That would be being dominated by food. Some guys are dominated by sex like that. And sex can capture us in much the same way that food can. So the Bible calls us to self-control. Without curbing bodily appetites, men become enslaved to the flesh rather than walking in the Spirit. And isn't that what the Bible encourages us to do? To be men who crucify the flesh and walk in the Spirit. Men need to be, Men don't need to be dominated by sex or by food. We're called to be filled with the Spirit of God. Men need to think more about the Lord of their body than they do indulging their body. So we can be carried away by sexual immorality just like we can by snacks or food or any other thing. Every decision, every thought, every behavior revolves around satisfying our sexual urges. Men shouldn't be dominated by things like that. So our culture, like the Corinthian one, 
Pornea was readily available, and men indulged it, and it enslaved them. And we're seeing men shipwrecked by this thing in our culture. So God created sex for procreation, to reproduce, and for enjoyment within the bounds of marriage. Guys, work on your marriage. Use self-control. Enjoy those things within the constraints and the freedoms that the Lordship of Christ gives you with the wife that you are committed to. But we need to develop the attitude like Paul. I'm not going to be dominated by anything, no matter what it is. I want to be dominated by the Lord. I want my thoughts to be dominated by Him, by His Word, and pleasing Him by being a responsible man who does His will. So the first reason that it's never just sex is because men can get easily enslaved by sexual immorality. Don't be the next one. The second reason it's never just sex is because sexual immorality confuses men. In this section of the passage, we see two ideas of union. This passage is, is, uh, really focuses a lot on this idea of union, that a man is united to two things. One, he is united to the Lord, and the other one, through his body, he can be united to his wife. So it's never just sex. Because it, there's a union to all this that a man needs to honor and respect. Let's read verses 14 and 17 and look for these two unions spelled out in this passage right here. It says, And God raised the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. So there you see the union with the Lord. And that's what the Corinthian guys are saying. It's like, look, man, well, if we have this resurrection thing, then what's the body? Can't I just do what I want to do with my body? And the Lord's saying no, because your resurrection is not a resurrection from your body. The resurrection is a resurrection of your body. So if you are going to be resurrected by the Lord, then you need to, in your body now, Live for the Lord. Your present ought to reflect your future. And so there ought to be in the way, take take care of yourself. Man, in your body, you are connected, a spiritual being to a physical world. You show up for worship in this body. You do work in this body. You communicate truth with this body. You love your family with this body. You move about the community with this body. You enjoy God's creation with this body. Your body matters. Take care of it. But understand that it's it's ought to be united with the Lord in the way that you treat it and the, the way that you act in the body. Let's talk about the second union now, and that is the union with a woman, the union with your wife. So he spells this out. He continues, Do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two will become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Listen to this. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But a sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Boy, that's that's an interesting phrase. So let's talk about the, the physical union with the body. Not only do you use your body to serve the Lord and, and you reflect a relationship with Him and the way you unite with Him, but you also use your body to unite with your wife. So this being the case, you can understand why Paul's saying, man, it's you can't just do with your body whatever you want. You, you ought to be preserving it and using it in the union that you have with a woman who is your wife. It's never just sex. Because when you bring other women into that, and we could even say in a homosexual relationship, other men that defile the, the, the natural use of the body or women, a woman with a woman, it just really creates a lot of confusion in the mind and the spirit and also for the body. A man who gives himself to porneia, to sexual immorality, to, to pornography, he severs his ability to to unite with his wife in an intimate way. And this is one of the things that we are seeing epidemic in men 
especially in young men, is they are unable to unite with their wife physically. It's causing impotency in men, the, this rampant use of pornography. But it's also causing kind of a, a spiritual, emotional, mental impotence in a man's life that he cannot unite with a woman, with his wife. He doesn't know how to treat her. Whenever he's, he just goes and indulges his own fantasies through a film that that will do whatever he wants that woman to do, no woman that you're married to is going to act that way. Man, you got to get to know her. You got to love her. You got to pursue her. We're going to talk more about this in Ephesians chapter 5. But unfortunately, we live in a time in which many women know that their their husbands are indulging in pornography and they not only accept it, but they don't know what to do about it. And so it's affecting men in the church. It's affecting the holiness of the church because guys We're ruining our relationship with women, and we are ruining the union that we are supposed to have in our relationship with God. It's never just sex. Guys, it's time to get control, to connect spiritually with the Lord. Physically, if you're married to your wife, if you're not married and you feel like God's leading you toward marriage, then you need to pursue her, and you need to be pure until you find her. And, and, and you need to do those things with this mindset. It's never just sex. And I don't want to confuse myself. I don't want to destroy intimacy in my life. And I want to please the Lord with my body. The third reason that we see in this passage that it's never just sex is because sexual immorality defiles men. Verses 18 through 20, he tells you, flee sexual immorality. Every other sin a person uh, commits is outside the body, but sexual immorality is a sin against his own body. There's a union in that that we talked about in the last point. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You're not your own. You are bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. Ultimately, sexual sin robs holiness from men. It robs God's favor from a man's life. The Lord can't bless you if you're living in sin. And so if a man is born again, he ought to be indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God, and he ought to act like he is. So the the Bible uses an interesting phrase, and it says, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Lord? And if this is the place where the Holy Spirit dwells, in the body, Shouldn't it be a sanctuary? Shouldn't it be a cathedral? Shouldn't it be a holy space? Something that we use to worship the Lord? Think about it like this. Let's say that um, you know we have a worship service on Sundays. We, we meet together in our church on Wednesday nights. But what if we showed pornographic films on Friday nights in our church? Obviously, man, it must not really be a church if they're doing stuff like that. I can't believe that. I can't believe you guys would do that. What if we showed filthy movies on Monday nights, right? I mean, obviously, you wouldn't do that because you're thinking, man, that's the church. It's a place where people worship God. It it doesn't go together. It's unfit to, wa- to watch those things in a place where you worship God. Okay? If that's what we say about the building, should that be true of the body? Because the body is the place where the Holy Spirit dwells. So Paul's telling you, it's never just sex. There's a union that takes place. Yeah, sexual sin is a sin like every other sin. But no, sexual sin is a sin unlike any other sin because it's it, there's a union to it. There's something else that happens with it. So Christian men are to be in the world but not of the world. It may be just sex to comedians. It may be just sex to a sitcom. It may be just sex in movies. It's certainly just sex in pornography. It may be just sex in conversation among friends. But if a man is indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God, it's never just sex. God's man must learn to possess his body in holiness, to serve the Lord with his body, and to connect with his wife. Be a redeemed and responsible man who never sees it as just sex.